Yeah, it's it's interesting because that inverse relationship you talk about exactly. We've seen it with gold, with the S and P, but one of the things we've also mentioned or we've seen, and that's been, I mean, the headlines for a while now is Treasuries, right? The last time it was that low, uh, it triggered a banking issue, and so we saw yields on the benchmark Treasuries. We're talking about the ten year hit, hit sixteen year highs. I was having conversation with a friend of mine. And he was saying, it's so dangerous that if it goes up to 5.1, it could even go up to 5.7%, then we have issues. Again, weak PMIs yesterday, one data point, probably shift the narrative slightly, but two, two aspects there. Do we expect treasuries to, to, to continue to go up? Is that yield curve going to steepen? And what is gonna to happen tomorrow? Do you think the Fed is gonna come back, throw a hawkish, hawkish message, take a stance and reiterate that this is a message about data, this is a message about inflation. The economy continues to be resilient and we're not stepping back down. Yeah, no, there's a lot. <laughs> that, that could be an hour long conversation just on all of those themes, to be honest with you, Ricardo. I mean, I think and I think these are significant themes to, to try to figure out. I think the, the, the general trend in 2023 has been all about investors trying to appreciate and understand a rising rate environment. And I would remind you know, all of us, many investors, particularly newer investors kind of coming in during the COVID era, we've never really experienced any sort of rising rate environment. It's a very different environment than the zero interest rate, you know, aggressive growth kind of period that we're coming out of. Uh, and I think recognizing the ripple effects of that sort of, you know, higher rate policy, I think we're still trying to get our head around. One of the biggest issues, I would say, for the, the equity markets here, which has been Primarily a growth-led, uh, you know, a uh, market in the in the U.S. for for sure, if not if not globally, is that higher rates just aren't great for growth, right? The growthy part of growth, the the, the uh, promise of future earnings, are less attractive. The higher rates are getting now, so mm -hmm. I think the trend in higher rates over the last couple of months, I think you're starting to see now the impact of that as companies, you know, recognize and consumers deal with the fact that things are getting more expensive, right? So the Fed is intentionally trying to slow down the economy. Um, yes. You're seeing signs of that, certainly uh, of that kind of working. The question now that I think Powell will have to address is, you know, continuing to try to navigate this, uh, you know, sort of quote unquote soft landing, which is how do you slow down the economy and get inflation in check, but not completely crush risk assets and and economic conditions at the uh, at the same time um rates for now have been have been rising i think there's plenty of upside still to be had with the 10 year i wouldn't be su surprised if we get sort of in the mid upper 4% range i, I wouldn't i wouldn't think uh, over 5% makes a, a, a lot of sense to me here but what yeah. i would say is there's a difference between rising rates which is what we've seen um, falling rates, which we've certainly seen before, and just consistently high rates. And I think that third option is what we might see, which is not necessarily that we go dramatically further up from here, but that we remain elevated. And you have to remember, elevated interest rates have a sort of an initial impact when people understand that's the new policy. But then there's sort of these additional consequences. So the next time you go to buy a car or buy a house or take a loan, that's when you're feeling the impact. And so I think the conditions will continue to be somewhat oppressive for consumers here for, for a little while. And I think that's what weighs on growth. That's why I think the rotation to value that we've seen here in the last six to eight weeks, I think that's just the beginning of that rotation of, uh, of themes going into the fourth quarter.